So on both iOS and Android, when I select the bottommost input, it should move out of the way of the keyboard. And whenever I click outside, the keyboard should be dismissed. This should be the same for iOS as well. Selecting the inputs, it moves up out of the way of the keyboard. And then clicking or pressing outside, the keyboard is dismissed. However, there are two more important things to talk about. The first thing is a property known as the keyboard vertical offset. And this is a property to the keyboard avoiding view. So that is keyboard vertical offset. Now this property is zero by default and it refers to the distance between the top of the screen and the main view of our app. Now this value enables the keyboard avoiding view to know the exact distance to move the input out of the way when we select it so that it can be clearly seen and the keyboard doesn't cover it. So for instance, if we change the value here to 10 and then we come here and select some of the lower inputs, we see that there is a gap between the input and the keyboard and this might be more pleasing to the eye and it's a matter of preference. However, on iOS, I observe that whenever you increase the value of the keyboard vertical offset, the bottom part of the input is cut off. So for instance, if I select the input like so, we see that it moves up and there is a distance. However, the bottom part of the input, which is the border, is gone and I couldn't find a way to fix it. If you scroll up a bit though, you will see that the border is still there. So if this is not an issue you would like to be dealing with, you can just revert this to zero. Also perhaps if you have an idea of how we can fix this and still keep the gap on top of the keyboard, please let me know in the comment section below. Now the second important thing we need to talk about is the situation where we have headers in our app. In that situation, the header comes between the top of the screen and then the main content of our app. That means we need an actual value for the keyboard vertical offset. By header, I'm referring to the kind that is provided by React Navigation. So to be able to demonstrate this, we need to set up React Navigation quickly in our app. So I'll visit the React Navigation site and make the necessary installations. So in my browser, I have the React Navigation documentation. And the first thing to install is the React Navigation native. So I'll copy that and then head to my console. Over here, I'll cancel the app currently running and then I'll paste the command to install the package. While this is running, we need to install React Native Screens and the Save Area Contest. So I'll copy that as well and then I'll install it once this is done. With this done, I'll install the next set. While this is running, the next thing we need to install after that is the Stack Navigator. So for that as well, we first need to install the stack. So I'll copy the command and install it once it's done. With this done as well, I can install the stack now. Now for the stack as well, it requires some extra packages. So I'll copy the command here and install it when the stack is done installing. With this done as well, we can paste the command for the next installation. Now while it's installing, the next thing we need to do here is to import React Native Gesture Handler in our app file. So I'll copy the statement here and we'll go to our app file. So in our app file, we paste the statement at the very top. Yeah, just like so. Now an extra but very important package we need to install is the React Navigation Elements. So for this one as well, we'll copy the command here. This will help us to get the actual height of the header whenever it's displayed. So I'll install that one as well when the other installation is done. With that one done as well, we can install our final package. That is the React Navigation element. Now we have all the packages that we need, so we can start the app once again. With our app running again, let's quickly set up the navigation in the app.js file. So over here, we first import the navigation container. And this will be imported from React Navigation Native. The next thing we need is a create stack navigator function. 
and that is from React Navigation Stack. With this, we first create a stack. And we use the create stack navigator function. Now we create the main function component that we want to export and we'll call this function app. So we change the one here to home, but first we'll copy the export statement. And then we change here to home. Once we have that, we can paste it here and then close it off. With that done, we get rid of the export statement here. Over here, the first thing we return is the navigation container. And in this container, we will have a stack navigator. And in this stack navigator will be a screen. Now this screen will have a name and we'll call it home. And the component will be the home component here. Once we have that and we refresh the app, we see that we have a new header at the top. And instantly on the Android, we see that the pattern at the top looks a bit excessive now. So we need to fix that. And secondly, on iOS, now when you select the input close to the bottom of the screen, the keyboard avoidance doesn't work properly anymore. So to fix this, we go back to our keyboard avoiding container. Now over here, we want to make sure that our keyboard avoiding container is still reusable. So we want to ensure that it can be used for when the page has a header and when the page doesn't have any header. So to help with that, we want to accept an additional property known as header available. Now since most of the time you'll be having a header, we want to set the default value to true. Now to fix the keyboard avoidance on the iOS, we need to get the actual height of the header and the package that we installed the last OHOP as here, that is the React Navigation element. So we import a function from that. The function we import here is use header height, which is actually a hook. Once we have that, we want to calculate the actual header height. So just before the return, we create a variable for that. So we say header height. And for this value, we'll call the use header height. However, we want to make this call only if the header available is true, otherwise to throw an error. So first we check if the header is available. If that's the case, then we call use header height. Now over here, if you want to add the additional space like how we did by setting the value here to 10, you can add the value to the use header height. So for instance, I can add the 10 over here. And if the case is that the header is not available, then we can set it to the default value we have here. So the alternative value will be 10 as well. With this done, we pass the header height here to the keyboard vertical offset. With this done, the keyboard avoidance should work fine on iOS once again. So if I select the input field at the bottom, it moves up out of the way of the keyboard just like we want it to be. And because of the check we are making here, if there is no header available and we set header available to false, it will revert to use the default value. Now concerning the SS padding on Android, this is because if you have a header, by default, the header avoids the status bar. So meaning, we don't need to check for the height of the status bar and add it to our padding whenever we have a header. So you have to adjust the padding value at the top based on whether we have a header or not. So for this one, since we'll be using the header available property, we have to set the style in the component because outside here, we cannot assess the header available property. So in the content container style here, we add another object in between the two styles. And over here, we set the pattern top property. Now over here, we first check if the header is available. 
if the header is available we set the top to the actual pattern we want so let's say since the header is there we want to reduce the pattern a bit so we can set it to 25. And now if the header is not available we set it to the initial values we used so for that we can just copy the value here and then paste it here now since this will end up containing just one style we can cut this one as well and add it here with that done we can get rid of the style sheet totally and we can get rid of the import as well and also we get rid of the reference here with this done everything should be okay now if this worked for you please leave a like on the video and let me know what you would like to see next in the comment section below the link to the full source code will be in the description below as well thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one